going on everybody how are you doing on this monday night it's just me tonight whitney gets a little bit of a break and i'm back here to answer your questions and talk gecko talk or reptile talk whatever happens to come up for the night what's good jacob good to see you in here my man good to see you in here I am just fixing the name of the live stream, but I am not cleaning tonight, guys. Again, not cleaning, so that means I can answer your questions. Wow, five people. Matthew, what's going on? Jay Lee, good to see you guys. Um, how is this interfering with Monday Night Football? Who, who's playing tonight? I like football. I just don't really watch it too much, but uh, what is going on, everybody? What is going on? I'm fixing the name. And I'll be right with you guys. All right. This is live stream number 54, guys. We've done 54 live streams. How does that sound? All right. Esteban, Ashley, Timothy. Isn't this nice? I'm not cleaning so I can actually like keep up with you guys. Uh, please, let's get the ratings up. If you go ahead and hit the thumbs up button and like it we'll get some more people to join i think i think that's the way youtube works so please help us out with that let me know your questions um kind of all yours your guys is tonight because like i said i'm not cleaning so i'm not really focusing on that and i can kind of just talk you sold 500 roaches that's great what size roaches and what price i actually took a back seat on selling roaches um i'm just collecting right now collecting collecting storing storing breeding breeding and then we'll see what winds up being i really don't want to sift roaches anymore if i could just pay someone to do it a year from now that's the goal so i'm just growing the colony we'll see what happens but they are a great staple income i'm getting ready to order my one two group when will you... oh from scaled art nice that's good stuff sell we are selling Jay Lee. i'm not sure what you're asking about but we are selling uh geckos right now by the way anyone who wants a gecko i'll give you a really good price on it because i'm getting ready to do like a huge sale slash discount um so check out our website if there's any geckos you like throw me an offer if there's a couple geckos you like throw me an offer and i'll definitely entertain it but um because a lot of the, oh by the way a lot of the geckos on our website right now are already three months older so they're already adult size we power feed all of our baby leopard geckos so their adult size by the time they hit like three to four months they're already adult size so nice lobster roaches yeah scaled art is great he's got some good stuff i'm glad i was able to get that magma boy from him shout out to that by the way some of our females are starting to breed again so they just got done breeding in april and they're restarting again right now, and it's only September. So uh, I'll probably make a video in the future like, can leopard gecko females breed two times in a year? You know, like ovulate at two times, different times of the year. Um, so I'm finding the answer to that is yes. But chronic, what's going on? So the reason I said that is because we have our male magma, which is our best tangerine leopard gecko. He's being bred right now to girls that are just starting ovulating again um they just finished they just finished in like april or may a couple months ago but they're they're starting again so what's going on herverth really cool emojis i like that um i just want to just kindly and humbly remind everybody there is a super chat feature on this live stream so if anyone is feeling frisky and wants to donate to geeky gecko creations uh just know that your donation is going to a good cause which is the support of all of our all of our animals and the growth of our operation here. So, um, no one got back to me on what game is playing Monday night. So I guess no one really is watching right now. But let me know. Yeah, Magma is het NDBE. Um, I'm personally not too concerned about NDBE. I think NDBE would actually go good with Black Knight. So if I do get some NDBE girls in in our collection, um, I'm gonna breed them to the Black Knight or you know. NDBE boys or whatever the case is. I'm going to try to breathe that into Black Knight. So Esteban Ribas with the uh, emoji. Thank you so much for that super chat. Appreciate that, my man. 
Um, so again, NDBE is a gene that they say the females are not fertile or it's rare for the females to be fertile. It's also a gene where some of the babies would have crinkled eyes. Um, but again, I don't know the exact statistics on this because I've never seen a spreadsheet. A spreadsheet like 10 babies out of 10 had crinkled eyes or one baby out of 10 had crinkled eyes. Um, so the goal would be obviously, same thing with our lemon frost, would be to data record everything. So um, that is where we are at. Um, I told you guys that I would keep you updated with everything. So the way you have your heat tape on the racks, does that keep them uh, warm? Always seeing people run wires from shelf to another shelf. Yeah, so when you have heat tape, you could snake it, which is one continuous piece, or you could parallel solder it. I've We've done both over here. If I was to show you like our ball pipe, python room, it's parallel soldered, what you're talking about. Either one works. They're both fine. It just depends on whether you know how to solder and whether you're comfortable with that. Uh, to be honest, the continuous strip is easy. Er, it's just one strip that goes throughout the whole rack. But... The parallel strip is, some argue that it's faster, that the electricity travels faster and heats up faster, but the continuous strip doesn't offer any issues heating-wise anyway, so it's not really an issue. Are you going to the Reptile Expo in Amarillo? I don't know where that is. Is that in Texas or California? If so, then no. We're not going to be doing any reptile shows outside of Arizona right now, but we will be doing reptile shows um in Arizona in November, we're going to be vending the Reptile Show in November, and then we'll also be looking to vend shows in the future, you know, so. Do the females have to go into hibernation? No, females do not have to go into hibernation before breeding. Uh, we keep our females year-round. A great example is the females that are going into ovulation again. So the first females to breed for me last year started ovulating in December of last year, and then they finished around April. Those same females are now ovulating now. So last year they ovulated in December. This year they're ovulating in September. So basically they're going two times in the same year for me. That's pretty crazy. Um, and they're great quality females, so I'm excited about that. It kind of caught me off guard. But yeah, spontaneously the other night I was you know cleaning... And whenever I clean, I usually check girls just to see what's going on underneath and to see if they start ovulating early. And, and thankfully that I did that because these three girls that all bred in December, started in December, now they're starting in September, which is pretty crazy. So You just built your own rack and you're ready to put that heat tape. Uh, yeah, we do sell heat tape, by the way. So let me know. Uh, we have four inch heat tape and also three inch heat tape if anybody needs. Um, and we do have a little bit slightly better pricing than the bean farm. The bean farm is a great place to get it from, but we have uh, slightly better pricing than them. So if you're interested. What might the cost be of a full ribbon of heat tape? So heat tape is always charged by the foot. We charge $2 per foot for three inch heat tape and $2.25 per foot for the four inch heat tape. Racks of your size. So these adult racks have the four inch on it, but three inch would work as well. And for babies, three or four inch would work as well. It just depends if you wanna give them uh, um, about a centimeter to an inch more of, of space to heat up their bellies. That's why I like the four inch personally. How do you fatten your geckos? Mealworms and um, I'll show you the, the supplements we use. So we make a supplement mixture, which is one scoop of Vianate for pets. You could buy this off Amazon. This is the big bottle, the 32 ounce. It lasts us a long time. Um, and then Repti Calcium, you could also buy from, from uh, Amazon with D3 because we don't use UVB bolts. So one scoop of each will go into a container like this, we will mix it, and then we will dust that um, with every feeding. Now, the, the formula that I used to use before was different than this, but they sold out of that formula. 
I'm noticing now that with this one-to-one -one ratio, a lot of these geckos are getting those armpit bubbles of fat. So I'm actually going to, re not fat, I mean armpit bubbles of extra calcium. So I am going to reduce the um, calcium intake to about every two to three meals. So as long as you're pouring calcium in there every two to three meals, you'll be perfectly fine. Is there anything to worry about with armpit bubbles? To my knowledge, OJ, I, I would have to say no to my knowledge. Um, in my personal experience, I've, I haven't experienced any deaths or any, as far as I can tell, any health consequences because of those bubbles. Um, but time will kind of tell on that, right? Um, I'm not really too worried about it right now. I've never heard anything negative about it. So that's kind of my opinion on it right now. When geckos start ovulating, the belly starts getting bigger. So you're not really looking for a bigger belly, although that can happen. You're looking for pink dots. When you flip over the belly, you see pink dots. And if you haven't seen our ovulation video, uh, go to our video history, type in uh, Geeky Gecko Creations ovulation video, and you'll find it. We, we have a video that shows the different stages of ovulation and also shows... Um, what eggs look like inside of a female versus ovulation. Jay Lee, I want to line breed some morphs. Which do you recommend? Um, tangerine is great. Tangerine is a great project because every single year when you breed two tangerines together, the next year you can hold back babies that are better quality than the parents. Black Knight is great. Um, we have some amazing Black Knight babies that came from... Um, different parents this year and some of the babies are more black than the parents so that is really really cool um line breeding let's see what else would i recommend this is kind of newer but the fascia lotus leopard geckos um thank you so much for that super chat timothy with the really cool emoji and the sunglasses 9.99 appreciate that my man um What's really cool about the Fasciolatus leopard gecko, uh, let me show you again the Fasciolatus leopard gecko because a lot of people are unfamiliar with what the Fasciolatus leopard gecko is. So this is a Fasciolatus leopard gecko. It's completely breedable with any leopard gecko species you have. Now, what do you see about this gecko that is unique? This is a normal Fasciolatus leopard gecko. There are no mutations inside of this gecko. But what does it look like to you? What mutation does it look like is in here? If you said snow or were thinking snow, you are correct. But there is no snow in here. The gecko is just naturally this color. Look at those purples coming out on the back. And also pink. And if you look right underneath the eyes... A lot of blue pops out right underneath the eyes and they have this really cool like small speckling pattern so this subspecies uh, can be purchased from us it could be purchased from geckos etc other people that work with um, this type of subspecies I think there's a lot to do here with um, breeding into like the could you imagine if we bred white and yellow into this which white and yellow is already a pattern reducer and color brightener um, I also bred snow into this, or if you breed black knight into this, will the black turn purple? Wouldn't that be really cool? Thank you so much, Timothy, for that donation. Once again, that is awesome. Another $9.99 with another cool emoji. You're rocking it tonight, my man. So the Fasciolatus leopard gecko, I think, is a whole new color palette to add to line breeding into tangerine, black knight, white and yellow, and snow for the current leopard gecko hobby. So we're breeding a lot of them right now. And uh, we're just holding back the best of the best. And to us, the best of the best fasciolatus is geckos that are um, showing higher concentrations of pink and higher concentrations of purple. That is what is cool for us, uh, for the fasciolatus project so guys we got a lot of geckos in here if i'm being honest with you i'm trying to sell a lot of geckos in here 
Um, I've only personally selected really nice geckos over the years. So like even our like lower quality stuff is really, really good and really accurately priced. But I'm willing to cut anybody deals right now. So check out our website on geckos that we have available. Throw me an offer. The worst thing I could come back and say is that I can't meet that offer at this time. But I am getting ready to sell a bunch of adult geckos, subadults. They're subadults. They're they're ready for breeding. They're like four to five months old. They're ready for breeding. They're they're gonna go into ovulation over the next few months. So if you're looking to get into breeding, this is a great time right now. I'm getting ready to wholesale a bunch of them. So before I do that, if you want a chance, look on my website. Or reach out to me on Facebook or Instagram or email, geekygeckocreations at gmail.com, and we will pair you up with some geckos that you're looking for. Um, probably over the course of this week, I'm going to go through this entire room, and I'm going to start um, marking the current weights and sizes and new geckos that I haven't listed for sale. Um, so the website has some animals that are for sale but it also doesn't have some animals that are for sale there's there's still more animals i need to put up for sale um, but i am trying to clear rack space for next breeding season so if you're in the market for breeding size geckos that are going into their first year of breeding hit me up we will work something out oj oh for the lychee fund thank you so much my man yeah i've been trying to be in communication with um the lychee lady um uh, I haven't actually talked to her for a couple of weeks. We've been super busy. I think she's been super busy. Um, but OJ, I can promise you that money is going to go to a good cause no matter what. We would love to eventually get a lychee in here though would be our goal. Uh, if I'm being 100% honest with you guys, I'm actually downsizing a lot of the collection. I might, I might get rid of all of our crested geckos and gargoyle geckos because I really just want to spend my time and energy focusing on... Leopard geckos, ball pythons, and tegus. So, uh, by the way, we have one tegu left available. There was a customer that um, uh, backed out last minute. So we have one female red tegu that we can ship. She is on sale for $200 uh, plus $50 shipping. So we could ship her if anybody wants. But thank you so much, guys, for the donations. That is really, really awesome. OJH702 and Timothy's. R22. Jay Lee, could you put together a group of lion bread and I buy them? Um, yeah, I mean, we do have some Fasciolatus and Turkmenicus. Oh, let me also mention this, guys. If you're not afraid to buy these geckos, we, we have a bunch of these available right now, and I'll be letting them go for fairly inexpensive, maybe like $75. And it's a really, really great bloodline to have. It is the Frosty Turk byproduct. What do I mean by that? So for any of you guys who don't know about our Frosty Turk project, it's a project that is trying to clean up the lemon frost gene and remove the bad DNA that is coding or regulating for tumor production. We are seeing progress with that project. It's not perfect. It's not a guarantee, but we are working that project. In the midst of that project, what we get is something called byproduct geckos. It's geckos that do not inherit the lemon frost gene, so they're just normal Turkmenicus geckos. But they have a little bit of macularis blood inside of them. So they are about, uh, let me let me think here, if you take 100% Turkmenicus and you breed it to, I, I'd have to, I'd have to do the math. My brain can't think under the pressure right now. But they are 75? No, no. They, they should be in the 90s. Like 95 to almost 99% Turkmenicus, right? Somewhere high 80s, 90s percent Turkmenicus, and then like 10% macularis. They do not have the lemon frost gene. So in theory, you should not have to worry about tumors because all the people are saying that you know, tumors are completely linked to um, the lemon frost gene. There was one case I've ever seen, one, in Finland where they did a study and it was an eclipse leopard gecko that had a tumor and it was from lemon frost byproduct. That is a complete oddity. Like, that is super, super rare. But that's why we are actually keeping back a bunch of 
the byproduct lemon frost to study them to see if, if tumors pop up in any of them. But <clears throat> um, I really, really think you're in the clean and in the clear. Um, a, a matter of fact, I'll even tell you this. If you buy a byproduct uh, lemon frost um, Turkmenicus gecko from us and the tumors pop up, I, I will probably refund you for that gecko. So you'll just have to show me the tumors. And I'm, I'm actually looking for people to partner with us in the lemon frost project to study these geckos, right? Because we can't house thousands of geckos over the years, right? That will study these geckos, observe them over the years, and report back to us if they see any issues so that we can have a large data pool of study. For that, we will actually be releasing some lemon frost for that as well as um, the byproducts, which are not lemon frost. So anyway, needless to say, if you're trying to get Turkmenicus into any of your bloodlines, these 90% Turkmenicus byproducts that we have, they'll be a great start. And again, we don't anticipate any tumors. It's always possible, possible because we don't fully know the lemon frost gene defects inside and out. But the, the tumors seem to be linked more towards uh, or completely towards the lemon frost side. Whatever's going on with the lemon frost side seems to be where the tumors are at. So I will digress on that topic. Um, also, we have uh, Tur uh, Frosty Turks, which are the, the, the Lemon Frost Turkmenicuses. We bred those into Fasciolatus. So we have like some 50% Fasciolatus, 50% Turkmenicuses that we are looking to um, uh, sell as well. We're going to study some, but if you're willing to study it along with us, we would love for you to participate in this project with us. Just reach out to me. Tell me what you're looking for. Um, make it easier on my brain to understand your desires. Just tell me, hey, I want a male and four females, or I want two females, or whatever the case is, and I can let you know what we have, and we'll figure something out. So, yeah, the shipping to Canada is like four hundred dollars. It's crazy. Um, it is pretty insane. So, questions? Any other questions we got here? Muhammad Arif. Recently, I bought a female Max Snow Het Eclipse possible Het. Uh, Tramper albino and thinking to pair her with my male raptor. I want to know what baby morphs. So Your male raptor is a visual if you pair a visual raptor to a het raptor 50% um, of the babies are going to be raptors 50% of the babies are going to be non raptors but you say it's only possible het raptor, uh, so which is tremperine, your um, tremper albino, uh, because you're saying it's 100% het eclipse. So you're going to get 50% eclipse babies, and if it is het for tremper albino, you'll get 50% uh, tremper babies, which is basically a raptor, right? So you'll get 50% raptor babies. 50% non-raptor babies, and you'll also get 50% snow babies. That's what you'll get from that pairing there. I need like a whiteboard so I can like show you. But again, we have a great genetics video on Punnett squares and learning how to, how to use Punnett squares so you could visualize the odds of your own genetic creations. Pretty cool. hot in here so I need to stay hydrated all right I don't see any other questions right now but please feel free to drop those questions when you got them I'm just glad I'm not cleaning tonight because it's nice to be able to sit here with you guys have a face-to-face -face conversation and not worry about cleaning geckos worry about geckos escaping um, Whitney would have been here. She was down. If if I had to clean, she would have been here reading, reading off questions, and that says a lot about her commitment. So, but she is a teacher, so she is busy all day, and I don't want to force her to do more work um, when she's just trying to, you know, decompress and relax right now. So, I should get out my white and yellow gecko because I love this boy. Oh, he's sleepy. He's sleepy boy. 
He's a sleepy boy. This is probably my favorite white and yellow. He's made so many great, great babies for us. And I hope and anticipate he's going to make many, many more. So this is Zeus, because he's like a lightning bolt. And you could just see he has that true white and yellow look to him, where he has just a brighter coloration, higher white sides, cleaner pattern. So he's super cool. We woke him up from a nap right now. So, But he's like one of my chillest geckos, like for real. He's super cool. Look at this guy. He's going to kiss my finger. I love you. I love leopard geckos, guys. Leopard geckos are great. And um, that's another reason why I'm really trying to hammer on social media a lot. Did you guys see our latest video today that dropped about the Diablo Blanco? What do you guys think about that style video? Did you like how we're like talking about a morph, um, showing some examples, giving our thoughts and opinions on it? Um, but one of the reasons that I'm really trying to promote leopard geckos a lot is because... I think they're a little more underlooked than they should be or could be. They're a popular animal, don't get me wrong. They sell in the tens of thousands each year, hundreds of thousands, to pet stores and all that kind of stuff. But a lot of people, like a lot of the fire, a lot of the buzz around leopard geckos has kind of died out. And that's because I, I think that not enough people are buzzing about it and promoting it so i want to do my part in buzzing about it and promoting the leopard geckos which is why i talk about these really cool line bred projects you know in ball pythons you have muta straight mutation projects you have thousands of mutation projects but in leopard geckos you don't have as as many mutation projects so you have to come up with some uh line bred projects and that's why I'm talking about the Fasciolatus Black Knight, the Fasciolatus White and Yellow, the Fasciolatus Tangerine. Jordan, I have an Aurora male, which is a bell, a bell female, a granite, super max snow male, and a max snow female. What would you recommend I get next? What is an Aurora male? What genetics are those? Um, but if you have a bell female, a granite, I don't know what a granite super max snow is. Uh, sometimes there's these names that people have just associated with their specific line. But what genetics are in there, let me know and I can give you my opinion. But it seems like you're working the bell projects. A white and yellow bell. Okay, perfect. So, so an aurora is a white and yellow bell. That's beautiful. I would just... Okay, so if you have a white and yellow bell... A bell female. What's a granite super mac? What is that? Yeah, Aldo, please reach out to me on uh, Facebook or Instagram or email. GeekyGeckoCreations at gmail.com. We can release some lemon frost. So we've noticed some lemon frost with um, some suspicious spotting that is coming in or some like lumps that are beginning to develop. We would love to get those into the hands of people who are interested in the project and just want to help us study the project. So we won't be selling them for, for super high dollar. It, well, we won't be selling them for high dollar at all if they do have like um, suspicious areas, right? But we would love for people to partner with us, take in those geckos, let us know their results, right? If they breed that gecko, let us know the results of tumors that come out in the babies down over the years or let us know if they don't breed that gecko let us know the severity of tumors that wind up happening or not happening in that gecko um we would love to gather as much data as we can um so yeah please reach out to me granite is geckos etc line of super snow okay so if you have a white and yellow male that is bell and a female that is bell I would probably start trying to go into tangerine bells. So whatever your whatever your um, dollar limit is, I would try to spend as much as you can to get the best quality tangerine bells. And I would, if you can, buy a male tangerine bell and a female tangerine bell that are um, het for eclipse, if you can. 
and the best quality you can. Breed them together, and, and you're going to start making the best quality Tangerine Bell Eclipses and Tangerine Bell Non-Eclipses. After a couple of years goes by, breed those into the white and yellow bell, and you're going to get some amazing stuff. I'm sorry, Aldo. Um, what is that? Aldo, what is your Facebook? I'll make a note. I'll make a note to message you. What is your Facebook? Is it just Aldo Retana? You know? Oh, did you message me on Instagram? I probably just need to get back to you. Um, because I'm, I'm a little behind on my Instagram responses. And maybe today I'll get off like 30 minutes early from the live stream so that I can get caught up on Instagram responses. Um, I'm using my phone right now, so I can't check Insta. Oh, I can check Instagram on my computer, I think. Let me see. I think I'm logged in. If I'm not logged in, then I can't <laughs> because I don't know my password unless I look on my phone. Okay, I'm logged in. Minisaurus. I think I saw your name on... Yep, Minisaurus. I see you, Minisaurus. I'm going to get back to you. I see your message on Instagram. Good morning, Rhino. Where are you, the Philippines? Yeah, I think Rainwaters are really cool too. Uh, so Rainwater and Bell are another two projects that the Leopard Gecko community is continuing to improve. So one of the reasons the Ball Python community is so great is because there's always projects to work. But not a lot of people are talking about improving projects in the leopard gecko world. It doesn't get a lot of buzz, right? So that's one of my goals is to buzz the leopard gecko world to show that there's still a ton of projects to work. So subspecies like Fasciolatus, Afghanicus, um, Turkmenicus, breeding that into Black Knight, Tangerine, White and Yellow. Those are great projects. Um, also, the Bell Project and continuing to increase the saturation of tangerine bells and also um you could do anything with that really you know like tangerine uh bell black knights right is a bell black knight gonna look different than a tremper black knight really cool i even think that we should try to create a tremper bell right what would it look like if a tremper is mixed with a bell and mixed with the rainwater what would that gecko look like you know, so I think that that is a project that can be worked as well. Um, it would be really hard to tell, right? Like you'd have to like really look for subtle cues or maybe it's going to be completely obviously obvious, right? Right? Maybe it does something crazy. Maybe it does nothing crazy. But the point is there's a lot of projects that we can still work. Um, and Bell is one of them. Rainwater is another. Those projects are not worked out yet completely. You can always improve Black Knight. You can always improve tangerine. So, uh, and then again, like I said, the fasciolatus. Bold stripe is another really cool lime bread pro uh, project. Uh, Rhino, you missed. Not too much. We're just talking, you know, gecko talk. How do people get new morphs in leopard geckos mixing? The existing genetics so the only way to get new morphs is if a new morph comes out which is what's pretty exciting about the cypher gene if any of you guys know what the cypher gene is um john over at gecko boa has a new gene for leopard geckos it's very expensive right now so mainstream people are not really working with it yet um but john is working with it what is a cypher black knight gonna look like what is a cypher tangerine going to look like? Um, so the only way to start new projects is to introduce a new color palette or a new pattern palette that hasn't been done before, which is why I was showing off the fasciolatus leopard gecko. The wild type species, they have a different color palette than the normal macularis species. So if we breed them into the normal mutations that exist in leopard geckos like white and yellow and snow and black knight and tangerine 
that's going to be really, really great. A tangerine fasciolatus. A, tan, um, a black knight fasciolatus. A white and yellow fasciolatus. These are things that I have really high hopes for. Also, fasciolatus has a lot of pink and purple. What if we can create like the pinkest gecko we can one day? Or the purplest gecko we can? Or if you take a look on my Instagram, I show that this one fasciolatus gecko has more blue on the top of its head than I've ever seen before. What if we, what if we could create a, a leopard gecko that starts off with an all blue head or, and then stems into an all blue, blue body, right? Like that's kind of the stuff that you need to look for. Thanks, Rhino. Thanks for watching our uploads and the re-uploads. Sarah, I hate to ask a new question. Don't worry about it. We love questions. You're new. That's great. We love um, new people and, and welcome questions from people who are new. You're doing lots of research. What does a baby Max Snow Leopard Gecko grow into as an adult? Perfect. I'll show you. By the way, we have um, a lot of videos, Sarah. If you go into our video history, we have a lot of videos about um, a lot of different kind of morphs. So you could search genetics or morphs in our video history and you'll see a lot of stuff. So here's a single copy snow leopard gecko. This is actually a pretty beautiful um, example, but this is just a snow. But you can see it has some really nice dark and bold contrast. It's pretty unique and it's pretty uh, like light colored. Not every snow is this pretty. Let me show you another example of a snow. Here's another example of a snow and she is not as pretty in my opinion. But what the snow gene does is it reduces the yellow coloration and it reduces the black coloration. So blacks turn purple and yellows turn a lighter yellow. That girl is also gravid with black knight babies, by the way. Oh, excuse me. Yeah, I'm really going to try to get to my Instagram questions tonight. Yeah, that would be great. Anyone, again, anyone looking to collaborate on the Lemon Frost Project, reach out to us, let us know. We're going to have a lot of byproduct geckos that are either showing some signs or geckos that are not Lemon Frost that we're going to want to get into the hands of responsible keepers to document for... Uh, for the project and for the leopard gecko world, you know, and and to report back to us if they see issues or whatever the case may be because we can't test for everything here, right? So again, I've only ever seen one non lemon frost leopard gecko that had tumors that came from a lemon frost lineage and it was out of a Finland study. We have the the research papers to a Finnish study. Um, so it had lemon frost parents it's not a lemon frost gecko, but it has tumors. I've only ever seen one example of that. We want to create a vast pool to study, right? Because you can't ever just study one example of something and make a conclusion. Um, which is why a lot of people wanted to stop the lemon frost project. They're like, oh, we've already came to our conclusion. But in reality... There wasn't a lot of data done. There wasn't a lot of research done. A lot of um, research documented. So we want to see research done and research documented. If you would like to be a part of that process, please re reach out to us. We will be letting these research geckos go for anywhere between maybe $75 to $100. And um, uh, you guys are free to breed the geckos, study the geckos, use the geckos however you want. And if you see anything, feel free to report back to us so that we can collaborate with you guys and we can use you guys as an extension of our data study. So 
Ashley asks, is there a morph that stays black and white or gray and white as adults? Yes, Ashley, the super snow. This is a super snow leopard gecko. It's a lighter example of a super snow leopard gecko. Let me show you a darker example of a super snow leopard gecko. This is a darker, look at that, darker example of a super snow leopard gecko. And these guys are fairly cheap. They're fairly inexpensive because they're pretty easy to make. <clears throat> it's actually my number one recommendation for beginners is to buy into the snow project because it's easy to make a snow and a super snow and it's super fun. Um, here is a super snow eclipse. The eclipse gene whitens the nose, whitens the legs, whitens the tip of the tail and it makes the eyes all black but you can see that red slit in the eye. Pretty cool. Again, super snow. By the way, we do have one super snow that is for sale right now. So if somebody is looking for a super snow baby, we do have one for sale. Um, $125 plus $50 shipping. So message me privately if you're interested in that. Facebook, Instagram, all Geeky Gecko Creations or email. GeekyGeckoCreations at gmail.com. You can also go to our website, geekygeckocreations.com, and um, you can reach out to us that way as well. Yeah, Blizzard is all white, so that's another great example, Rhino. Urban Geckos has Tremper Sunglow Radar, something like that at them page. That would be interesting, Aldo, because usually the bigger breeders, they're very much against breeding um, Tremper albino with um, Bell albino because the two are not compatible. You can't take a Tremper and breed it to a, a Bell and create an albino. They're, they're located at different parts of the DNA. So most of those guys are very against crossing the albino lines because they say it's, it's dirtying up the hobby. It's making the hobby bad. You know, so I would be surprised. Um, Esteban, I'll have to check that out. That's so weird, like, that's so weird that, that um, you know, there's so many people in the hobby that give newer breeders so much trouble, right? Like, as a newer breeder, and I've gotten this myself, if you go onto a Facebook group and you say, hey, what happens when I breed Bell with Tremper? They're going to cut your head off. They're going to cut your head off. But these bigger breeders like Calico Geckos and Suburban Geckos, they don't cut their heads off. That's just um, a little bit of hypocrisy, I think, that takes place in <clears throat> some of these um, type of people that are in this hobby. So try not to get dragged down into the negativity. I'm all about creativity. That's why I'm like, hey, if you got if you got a desire in mind, if you got a thought in mind, something you want to accomplish, go for it. Um, but usually these bigger breeders, <clears throat> they really try to keep their name out of drama and away from, so it's really surprising if they would have something listed as like Tremper Bell, but uh, I, I believe you, I, I'd love to check it out. I just, I just know how against uh, drama these guys are and they know that that brings up drama in the community. So, Jason B, I have my first breeding pair. My male is a Max Snow Tremper, white and yellow. He is a year old. My female is a Super Snow Het Eclipse. She is four months old. Great, that's gonna be a good pair. You get some Super Snows, Well, uh, Jordan, what did I say that was blowing your mind? Muhammad, I've been seeing morph names like Tomato Dan Clown on Insta. <laughs> Do you know about these morphs? Can you teach us geeky about these morphs or these morphs just breed? It's just breeders naming them for attraction, right? People like names. Don't get me wrong. People like names. That's why we have the San Francisco, I was going to say Giants, but the San Francisco 49ers, the Green Bay Packers the New York Giants, right? The Texas Armadillos. No, I don't know. The Texas, what, Cowboys? 
Yeah. I don't follow sports too much. I like sports, but I don't follow too much. Anyway, you get the point. People love names. People love associating names. All that a clown is, a clown is just a really nicely bred tangerine leopard gecko that has expressions of purple and green and dark black. The clown originated from tangerine, white and yellow, hyper yellow, and bold or Afghanicus, right? So all of this blood mixed together. Um, let, let me explain. Tangerine is obvious, right? What are the colors that are in a clown? A clown is orange and green and purple and black. Those are the four colors that a clown leopard gecko is. How do you get orange, green, purple, and black into a gecko? The way you get that is by breeding parents together over the years that exhibit those characteristics. There is almost no darker characteristics naturally in leopard geckos than the Afghanicus leopard gecko. Let me show you an example of an Afghanicus leopard gecko. So this is a wild Afghanicus leopard gecko. Look how dark that black is. The black is black on this leopard gecko. This is how a leopard gecko is wild. So people took Afghanicus and bred it with tangerine to create uh, tangerines that had very dark black pigment in it. Then you would take that tangerine that has dark black pigment in it and you would breed it to high yellow leopard geckos or white and yellow leopard geckos that, that have high characteristics of green coloration to it. Now after breeding this year, I noticed that when you take a yellow leopard gecko and breed it to an orange leopard gecko, you do get a green color. So all you have to do technically is breed a tangerine, bold or Afghanicus, to a, um, a, a high yellow leopard gecko or a white and yellow leopard gecko. And when you combine those, the babies are now going to have the best of all of those worlds. They're gonna have tangerine mixed with high yellow, which is going to give a green appearance. Then there's going to be areas of the leopard gecko that are outlined in orange because that's just the way leopard gecko palettes work. Then there's going to be areas of the leopard gecko that are purple because whenever you mix orange and green and yellow together, it starts to show these purple colorations. And then you're going to have areas of the leopard gecko that are dark black. Therein is your clown. And little by little over the years, you take the best examples of these babies and breed them back and forth to each other and you have your clown. So if anybody came up with another name for another line of clown, all they're doing is just saying, hey, I took a little bit of a different turn, I took some unique blood, I added it in, and I got a different reaction, and there we go. Sarah, that's pretty awesome, thank you so much. No problem. Hyro, if I breed a het tremper albino with a black knight, it's possible to get babies half orange and black. Um. Tremper albino is not an orange leopard gecko, Hyro. Tremper albino can be yellow. Let me show you. This is also a super giant. This is a tremper albino leopard gecko, okay? We're not going to disturb this girl too much because she just bred the other day. But this is a tangerine tremper albino leopard gecko. They're two very different um, uh, things, okay? Tangerine is an orange gecko. Tremper albino is a yellow gecko, okay? But 
if you have an orange gecko that is het for tremper, the babies are going to come out kind of orange and kind of black. Actually, um, I don't know which baby it is, but we did breed a really nice tremper albino tangerine this year to our black knight. And right now, the babies are just looking black. Like, they're just looking dark. Um, when the babies first hatched out, they were yellow and black. Tangerines usually hatch out yellow and then they turn orange over time. So when the babies first hatched out, they were yellow and black. As time went on or as time is going on, um, all we're seeing right now is black coloration. It's, and oh, where the yellow is, it's kind of like gray. So that's not their final color though. Geckos always go through color changes. Um, I might be able to find it for you if you want to be patient and I can kind of show you how the... How the babies are turning out. So if everyone wants to see what a black knight tangerine looks like, we can show that. Okay, so first let me show you the mom. She's a pretty nice tangerine, actually. I just, I didn't want to make more tangerines because we have a ton of tangerines and we had the Black Knight and she ovulated late this year. So here we have a tangerine, Leopard Gecko. Check her out. This is the mom. We bred her to a pure Black Knight. I'll show you the dad. Very nice example of a male black knight. This guy's breeding to everything, okay? So male black knight, female tangerine. Uh, tangerine is a nice example. Now let's see what the babies look like. So it's 14 and 15. Where are you? Where are you? It's kind of nice because all the black knights are like lined up in one area. Well, not all of them. And it looks like 14 and 15 are not lined up in that area. I'm looking over our genetic codes right now to see if I could find these two. And I'm not finding them yet, but they're here somewhere. Okay, so found him. Oh, okay, actually, so they've lightened up a little bit now. So here you go. This is a Black Knight Tangerine. So it's yellow right now. It might develop a little bit more orange as time goes on. But you might ask me, why is it yellow, Frank? Because the natural color underneath a black knight is yellow. A black knight is comprised of... Think of a leopard gecko having layers to, um, to its color, right? Think of the paint on your walls. The paint on your walls is a layer of color, a layer of primer, and then the wood, right? It's the same with the leopard gecko. There's the gecko... Then there's a layer of color, and then there's the paint, right? The black is the top layer. The yellow is the base, the middle layer, right? And then like the white is the base layer. So leopard geckos are stacked in colors. So a black knight is actually yellow on its base layer. And when you mix a yellow gecko with an orange gecko, you're going to get babies that are kind of yellowish orange. Now, here's a much nicer example um, of the potential. This baby is turning out much darker, and hopefully it gets darker as time goes on even more. 
But again, this is what happens when you breed a black knight to a tangerine. You're going to get these geckos that are kind of yellowish black. It might develop a little bit of orange in time. But to get an actual gecko that is actually orange and black, you need many years of line breeding. So you'll take like the most orange geckos and the most black geckos and breed them to each other. Then you'll find the babies that have the most orange and black and breed that to like breed those to each other. And that's the process that you go about it. So we're actually keeping those babies back to breed them back into Black Knight. Oh, actually, oh no, we didn't. We have a really dark tangerine that, that is throwing some really dark colors. I'm looking forward to breeding her to, um, to the Black Knight. <clears throat> so Thag says, I have a gecko that I bought as a baby. It was solid white, no patterns or spots. Okay, so it's probably a, a blazing blizzard at all. And now it's eight months old and turning completely dark gray, almost black. Okay, so what you got is a midnight blizzard. Let me show you. So... Blizzard is a gene that takes away all pattern. Actually, we just did a uh, video on this. Check out the video we released today. It's called the Diablo Blanco video. The Diablo Blanco is Blizzard plus Albino plus Eclipse. But um, this is a Blizzard without the Albino and without the Eclipse. It turns a grayish purple color. Now, a midnight blizzard, specifically, nobody really knows why this happens, but some blizzards turn out darker than other blizzards. And by the way, we got babies. That, that midnight blizzard bred with a black knight, and we, we just got babies from that, so that's pretty cool. So anyway, uh, that's, that's what you got. Could we see the Super Snow Baby for sale? Um, where is it? is the question where is it where is it where is it let me see let me see Yeah, so I got the code <clears throat> seventeen. And 20, 17, 20. Let me see. Found it. This is actually that split clutch. This was, now if you guys saw, I posted on Instagram that two dads can sire one clutch. We had one egg 
that was um, re uh, 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 fertilized by the black knight sperm. And we have another egg that was fertilized by the super snow sperm. So check this out. This is the child to the black... These are siblings. These are siblings. They were born in the same clutch. This is the child to the black knight. Father. And... Try not to... Lose geckos here. They can be a little jumpy at times. This is the super snow that was actually fathered by a different male that the mom was with earlier in the year. And so this is a super snow. This is the one for sale. All black eyes, super snow. For what it's worth, this little baby has a black knight brother. Now... In theory, technically, this should have no Black Knight genetics in it whatsoever. Because only one dad can sire one baby, right? But, this was two dads sired two different babies that were siblings. So, that is the Super Snow. All right. Ashley, my first purchase was a super snow eclipse. She is beautiful. What is your most vivid orange tangerine male that you have for sale? Ooh, that's good. We actually don't have any... <clears throat> we might have some males for sale. Let me think here. Let me think here. I don't want to sell too many males because we're going into next breeding season. But I do have two males that I think I could sell. I think I could sell. Let me see. But they're not going to be super cheap if they're breeders. They're, they're not going to be super expensive, but they won't be super cheap. Because uh, for me to let it go, it has to be worth, you know, it has to be worth a certain amount for me to let it go. Um, this one's in shed right now, but I don't think, I don't think I'm going to get rid of him yet. Because he has a lot of green on him. So I want to utilize that green. Later on down the line. But. This is a really nice boy. Potentially this boy could be for sale. And he is just about two years old. So he's in <clears throat> a year and a half. Uh, so he's just in the prime of his life right now. He's a very sweet boy. Great attitude. So if you like this guy. He's not officially for sale on my website. His genetic code is uh, Tangerine M003. So just reach out to me again on Facebook or Instagram. If you like Tangerine M003, okay, I know, I know for sure I'm going to sell this guy. Um, he does come from some great genetics. I would hate to see him go for less than $250 plus $50 shipping. So uh, take that for what it's worth or just keep that in mind in your list of options. But I would sell this guy for $250 plus $50 shipping. Sweet boy, ready to rock and roll. Virgin male. So virgin males are usually really horny. Uh, and he's Tremper Albino. I mean, um, he's 100% Het. 
Tremper Albino, and he is 50% het for um, Eclipse. And this is the male that bred to every single one of our um, females last year. Every single one of our orange females was bred by this male. <clears throat> He's the male that I want to kind of keep as a backup. But if somebody really, really want This guy is a great breeder, by the way. He will breed anything. And he's a young breeder. He's a stud. If somebody wants this guy... I don't know. I got to think about... I got to think about it. Um, and he is more orange. Both of these geckos are more orange than the picture is... You know, than the camera can pick up right now or show. Not a lot more orange, but definitely a little bit more orange. Um, and I can definitely, like, get people pictures who are interested. But this guy is 100% Het Eclipse. He is 100% he's Tremper Albino, Het Eclipse. So he would be uh, 350 plus $50 shipping. But he's a breeder, ready to rock and roll, breeds anything. He's great. I would, I would let him go for 350 Yeah. Need to get caught up with questions so that I could go grab some pizza. Oh, and his genetic code is uh, Tangerine M002, if anybody was interested. Yeah, gargoyle geckos are really cool. Um, like I said, I think I'm getting out of gargoyle geckos and crested geckos just so because i have so many animals here and i want to focus on uh leopard geckos ball pythons and tegus yeah so wild type leopard geckos do have different genetics the afghanicus is dark yellow and black the turkmenicus is um a little bit lighter like a purplish and uh, purple and yellow and the fasciolatus is the lightest of them all which is purple yellow and pink hues to it and it can't all um that's also called outcrossing uh which is also usually better um historically for limiting uh defects and birth defects yeah we don't have any fasciolatus listed on our site but if you're interested in fasciolatus reach out to me and i will um tell you what we have available because I think uh, originally I was planning on keeping all the fasciolatus, but now I think I'm going to downsize some. Um, yeah, I think I'm going to downsize some. Uh, so if you are interested, let me know. And again, we have a lot of byproduct lemon frost Turkmenicuses. So they're not lemon frost, but they are like 90% Turkmenicus, which is great. We'll let those guys go for seven 75 bucks each you know so if someone's interested in that hey jim how you doing um ojh i don't know which fasciolatus babies are for sale but i can show you um I can show you some examples of fasciolatus babies, but not all of them are going to be for sale. So first, I'm not sure if you were here earlier, OJ, but this is a fasciolatus leopard gecko. It can vary a little bit, but this is like one of the better qualities because you can see how, how light yellow and purple it is naturally. This is its natural coloration. So what if, if it turns the blacks purple, what if we bred Black Knight into this? Would a Black Knight be more purple, you know? Th those are really cool projects that I think that we have yet to really still work on. And we're, we're going to do it. We're doing it. This is another example of fasciolatus. You can see really light again. And this is a third example of fasciolatus, which is a little bit darker, but you can still see very light yellow coloration compared to a normal gecko. 
And these areas right here are purple. She's not our best fashion lotus female, I don't believe. I think we have, let's see. Yeah, this girl's pretty nice. Look at that. Look how faded out this gecko is. It's like the moon almost. This is their natural look and appearance. So it's great. And they'll breed with regular macularis and stuff. Um, now let me see where I listed the fascia lattices that I want to show. Because I got some fascia lattices that are really, really like pinkish and really nice. You could check our Instagram. I, I put them on Instagram. Um, the really, really nice ones. But I'm trying to look to see if where are they? I lay I started to label the ones that I want to show on like live streams and stuff like that. Here we go. I got a show fasciolatus here. There's a fascia lattice that I have that is like pink. I'll definitely not be selling that one. But it is on our um, website. Uh, not website, on our Instagram. Okay, so this is not the pink one that we have on our Instagram. But here's a fascia lattice subadult. Look, at, it looks like the moon to me. Like, look at that light coloration, speckled coloration. All the black banding is purple. All the yellow is a very faded yellow. The pattern starts up very high on their body. So it gives them this really clean appearance. It looks like the Apollo moon landing or something like that. Anyway, um, yeah, so we, we, uh, we probably have some fascia lattices pure that we can sell. Just get with me. Same thing with the Turkmenicuses. Uh, the pure is always going to cost more. So, like, pure fascia lattice and pure Turkmenicus, um, I probably think we're going to list them at, like, $150 right now. Um, but the crosses, the Turkmenicus lemon frost crosses that are Turkmenicus and not lemon frost, we'll list those at, like, $75. We'll give people a good deal on that. Um, what was I going to say? So, crossing genetics is beneficial because, let me let me just say this. There's been a lot of human populations that have been inbred so much to where a certain race is more prone than other races to like diabetes or other diseases, right? Um, I don't really know off the top of my head what diseases, but let's say the white race, right? Like Europeans, right? Like French, let's say French people. Their population has been inbred so much because without realizing it, you might be marrying like a distant cousin that you didn't even know that like is related to you to some degree, right? All, all humans are related to some degree, right? Because we all came from two humans, depending on what you believe. But our DNA started to spread out wider and wider and wider as we populated with other humans from different parts of the world that are farther away from our initial bloodline. When you do that, same thing in leopard geckos, it, it refreshes your bloodline and you are less likely to inherit diseases and stuff that are common to that bloodline. So let's just say the macularis bloodline has been inbred in captivity for so long that defects are now stacking up in that DNA. When you outcross it to a fascia lattice or a Turkmenicus or different blood leopard geckos, now you're starting a clean slate, you're refreshing that DNA. So that's another reason for um, genetic uh, diversity and, and you know breeding <clears throat> different bloodlines.
A Max Snow Bold Stripe, it depends on the quality of the Bold Stripe. If the Bold, if the two stripes are really, really dark and great, then you're looking at like 200 to 250 bucks. If they're not so great, you're looking at like 100 to 150 bucks. Daryl asks, would a 24 by 16 by 18 inch be a sufficient size for one adult after putting in some hides and decorations? No, that's perfectly fine. As you can see, we keep our adults in um, uh, 16 inches deep by 11 inches wide by 6 inches high. So you're like four times the size of our stuff. So, My favorite ball python gene. Ooh. Hmm. Man, there's a lot of good ball python genes. But, and I'm kind of shooting myself in the foot here right now, but at this moment, my favorite ball python gene is the clown. Because when mixed with other genes, it just, it, it just looks amazing and has so many different genetic diversities. The reason I say I'm shooting myself in the foot is because we have decided not to work with the clown and to focus on the puzzle project. I think the puzzle project has just as much potential as the clown, but that potential is untapped. It's unrevealed to its fullest potential yet. So I can't say at this moment, I can't say I like puzzle better than clown, but the reason I got into puzzle is because everybody and their mother is into clown. And I wanted to be in a market that was less competitive, less saturated, that I could jump in early, develop a name for myself, develop um, a lot of really high-end stuff. And then with the money generated from that, I could, if I don't like puzzle, I could sell the whole puzzle project and just work with clown. But I don't think that's gonna happen. But at this moment, clown has better combinations than puzzle. But puzzle is a competitor against clown. And I think, I think they're gonna run toe and toe in the future. They'll be really uh, tight competitors with each other. <clears throat> Possibly. What hurt the puzzle project the most this year, or what hurts the puzzle project the most is the Krypton gene. Because the Krypton gene sort of makes makes a puzzle looking animal and it's in the clown complex. So it's, it's the worst thing that could have happened to puzzle. The absolute worst thing that could have happened to puzzle is the Krypton gene being allelic with clown. Because when you mix a cryptic Krypton gene with um, a clown gene, it creates an animal that looks like puzzle in the clown complex. That's the absolute worst thing that could have happened to puzzle, and it just happened this year. Um, that being said, I think a puzzle looks better than a Krypton. But there's so much you could do with clown, so much pattern you could bring in to create uh, a really cool coloration with a uh, pattern with clown and clown has more of a unique head pattern than puzzle right now at this moment if i'm just being honest to me in my visual judgment but we invested a lot of money into puzzle so we are riding it out at this point Uh, yeah, Rhino, we have um, the Turkmenicus. We have Turkmenicus leopard geckos that we're going to sell for $75. Um, anything on our website right now, if anything, I'm just telling this to you guys. This is your benefit. If any tangerines catch your eye right now, I'll sell them to you for $150 <clears throat> plus $50 shipping. If any non-tangerines catches your eye, I'll sell them to you for, um, let's say, let's say eighty-five dollars plus fifty dollars shipping. Okay. Um, it depends on the quality. It's going to be eighty-five to hundred dollars for any non-tangerine, and it's going to be hundred fifty to hundred seventy-five dollars for any tangerine, depending on like the quality. Actually, you know what? Forget that. Let's just... I don't want to make it difficult, right? I told you at, the, be, at the, the start of this stream that I was looking to downsize and I want to make a sale. Take advantage of me now while I want to make a sale. These geckos that I'm selling for $150, 
they're literally worth $250, but I'll sell it to you for 150 bucks. And the geckos that I'll, I'll sell you for $85, they're definitely worth 150 bucks, but I'll sell it to you for $85. They're all breeder ready. They're all the size that you need. They're all going to go, they're all female. They're all going to go into breeding this year. And we have those two males available that I showed that are <clears throat> powerhouse males, ready to breed, locking with females. So the one is 250, the other one's 350. But all of these females that are virgin females, sub adults, up to size, look on our website. Whatever catches your attention that's available, <clears throat> I will sell you for $150 for any tangerine and $85 for any non tangerine. You're getting a really smoking deal on some of these geckos. Because some of them are white and yellow, some of, you know, everything. So, what's going on, Jay Harris? Thank you so much, my man. Yeah, if you're looking for an orange male to start your breeding project, those two are great orange males. We'll look whoever's looking for baby crested geckos or a few leopard geckos. Yeah, oh, so that reminds me. We have about 10 baby crested geckos right now that are super high-end baby crested geckos. And we're selling them for $100 each, or if you get more than one, that price drops, like $90 each, $80 each. You know, probably the lowest we're gonna go is like $75 each, but depending on how many you get. But if you look at our website, any of those baby crested geckos that you see there, the dark, the medium, the light, all of those are just a hundred bucks for sale right now. And we could ship more than one gecko in a package. So you save on shipping if you get more in one package. And that's why we also give you more incentive and we lower the price of each gecko that you buy. We lower the price. And we can mix and match. Leopard gecko with crested gecko. We can do all that. So... Gyro, what happens if while breeding this happens? I breed a super max snow with the tangerine male. She lays her first eggs in clutch. After I put that with her another, I put her another male with another morph. So if you breed two males to one female, the sperm from both of those males will be circulating inside of that female's um, uh, DNA or uh, that female's reproductive system. So she will use one or both of the sperm from that male to fertilize the eggs and you won't know which who you won't know who the daddy is unless it's obviously clear like in our case we had a super snow male and a black knight male bred to a super snow female so the super snow male when bred to a super snow female will produce a hundred percent super snow babies but we bred a black knight to that female as well. And one of the babies came out snow. And it came out darker than a regular snow. So that baby was fertilized by the Mac snow. I mean, that baby was fertilized by the uh, black knight. The other baby was fertilized by the um, super snow. Now, the first clutch was completely fertilized by the super snow. The second clutch was completely fertilized by the black knight. And the third clutch was fertilized by the super snow and the black knight. Interesting stuff. How much would you price a max snow bold stripe? Um, 150 bucks if it's good quality, 200 bucks. Yeah, if you're looking for something light for a snow project, um, OJH, if you could message me on Facebook or Instagram, I can find you the lightest ones that we have available for sale. Obviously, the lightest of the light we're keeping for ourselves, but um, the fasciolatus genome is prone to lightness anyway. So even if you bought a regular fasciolatus that's a little bit darker, it's still lighter than a regular macularis by far. Uh, so just keep that in mind. But if you... I'll send you a list of like every fasciolatus we have and and um, uh, we could do it that way if you're interested. So, Can we see Tangerine F027? Absolutely. I think I know where it is. Actually, it's right there. 
So if I had to guess, this one is uh, going to be 40 grams or so. You can see the size, sub-adult. We power feed these ones, so they get fed a lot. This would be a super nice quality gecko to get for $150 because I'm looking at it right now. It has a lot. It has a lot of carrot tail for 150 bucks, like a, a deep carrot tail. Look at that. Deep carrot tail. Um, it's big, so it's it's almost ready to be a breeder. And it's just a nice looking gecko. And by the way, it is um, they're all 50% het for Eclipse. So. Actually, some of them might be 100% uh, het for Eclipse. Let me see. F027. Let me see the parents that she came from. Oh, no. She's 50% het, 50% het Eclipse. My favorite morph for leopard geckos is... Ah, it's tough. But nah, it's tangerine. My favorite morph for leopard geckos is tangerine. Okay, I'll give you my top three. Tangerine, white and yellow, black knight. But how would I place one above the other would be tough. I would probably go... Because <clears throat> tangerine and black... Tangerine and white... Tangerine and white and yellow make the greatest combination. But a black knight is just... It's just an awesome looking gecko. Gosh, it's tough. All right, for now, let's just go... Tangerine, Black Knight, White and Yellow. Top three. Camera. Yeah, Esteban, let me know if I showed it to you the way you were looking. If not, I can re-grab it. Um, any tips on growing your reptile business? How to sell, how to gain exposure, how to have a successful breeding pair? Um, so let's touch on breeding first um a successful breeding pair pair the male with the female if she if she were um acts aggressively to him for more than 60 seconds then i'll separate the male and try again on a different day repeat that process five or six times um within a one to two week span. if she keeps rejecting that male pair her with a different male most likely it's not the male most of the time, the female receives the male. Some males get a little bit lazy, though, and they won't breed the female. So you want a vigorous male. And that's why this male that we have for sale right now for $350, he is a vigorous boy. He is a breeder for sure. He locks anything and everything all year long. Um, and the same with his brother. I, You know, his brother is a... I think we placed his brother with, like, one or two females. Um... um I can't really remember, and then we decided like not to use him. So his brother was never really fully tested, but a gecko's a gecko. You know, most males breed like that. Um, most. Now, tips on growing your reptile business. I would create a Facebook account, an Instagram account. I would also create a website and YouTube if you want. But you have to do some sort of social media. Learn how to use hashtags. Learn how to build a website. Learn how to edit YouTube videos if you want, whichever of those you want, and then give your all to it. You know, if you're doing Instagram, post a picture of day with the right hashtags. Learn how to take great pictures. Um, study other people's Instagrams. Study our Instagram and look at the way we take pictures and, and then the way we use hashtags. Don't use the same hashtags in a row. Always mix them up so the, the algorithm does not think you're a robot. Let's start with that. How much would you price a 50% Black Knight? 500 bucks. Because a 50% Black Knight, when bred black back to a Black Knight, can still produce black babies. So, all this talk makes me not want to sell my tangerine. I don't know. Show me pictures, Neurotics. If you got a good tangerine, 
you don't want to sell it until you have a better one to replace it. We have better tangerines to replace these males now, so that's the only reason I'm considering selling it. But I have this one male up here that started our whole tangerine collection. I won't sell him yet because he has something that the other tangerines don't, and that's green coloration, like a higher level of green coloration than, than the other two do. So, DeFace says... I also have one that is like a starburst pink with little white spots, but the white spots are turning light yellow. And I also have one that's super bright yellow. Yeah, uh, purple. What are those kind? You have one with white spots that are turning yellow. That might be like Enigma or white and yellow. You'd have to send me pictures on Facebook or Instagram at Geeky Gecko Creations. Also, you have a super bright yellow and purple. Yeah, send me pictures on Facebook or Instagram. That will definitely help. Up North Productions. What would be the best morph for a new breeder who wants to sell quality quality and not quantity? <clears throat> the best quality geckos you could get into right now are Tangerine, White and Yellow, Black Knight. Those are the top three quality geckos that you could get into breeding right now bold stripe as well but <clears throat> bold stripe has almost been perfected in this hobby there's not really too much to do with it uh, so i would say tangerine white and yellow and black knight are your best ways to go white and yellow and tangerine when mixed together just creates the coolest looking random pattern bright animals and then black knight is a black knight and of course Tangerine is just a tangerine. They're just great quality animals. You can always improve the blackness, always improve the orangeness. So thank you, Esteban. Yeah, she's she's a great gecko. She's like 40 grams or something. She's ready to rock and roll as soon as she ovulates. So silver eyes means that they're probably Tremper albino. But yeah, please message me Facebook or Instagram. Guys, I'm getting a little bit hungry. The wife just came inside, so I'm sorry. But I think... I'm going to end the stream here at this hour and a half mark. My voice is getting a little worn out too. But please, if you have any interesting geckos, like I said, we are looking to downsize. Take advantage of that. Look at our website. Make us some offers. Ask me if I have anything else available. Hit me up on Facebook or Instagram at Geeky Gecko Creations or message us from our website and I will get back to you as soon as I can. We will make some connections. We could ship a bunch of geckos in one package. I'm looking to ship a bunch of geckos. You want five geckos? Let me, let's, let's make a deal for five geckos. What's it going to take to make a deal with you for five geckos? Let's make that happen. So I love you guys. Thank you so much for the appreciation. I love it. Please, if you haven't yet, check out our latest video on the Diablo Blanco. I've been trying to improve our editing skills and, and also it just helps the YouTube pick us up, recommend us to more, more people. So I appreciate you guys. I love you guys. I will see you guys in the next video, which is going to be soon. I'm making more videos more frequently now, which I'm really excited about, which is another reason why I want to downsize the collection so I can make more videos. I love you guys. Enjoy your evening. Um, I'm going to enjoy some TV and pizza with the wife. And uh, I, I cleaned. I, I cleaned. I actually have no more cleaning left to do for tonight. I'm so happy. Usually I'm cleaning till like 3 o'clock in the morning. But love you guys. Peace. And see you soon. Bye.